I was just outside. It's a beautiful day, but things aren't blooming fast enough for me. So I picked some of these forsythia branches from my yard, and I'm just gonna stick them in water over here. Ah. I'm hoping in three or four days, I'll have some beautiful little flowers, little yellow flowers on these branches so that I'll have those to paint. Meanwhile, there's a lot of birthdays in the spring and I want to make cards for my friends and family. So I thought I'd show you today how to do simple collage, maybe with a little water, watercolor paint and using the Yuhu glue. You're going to love this glue if you haven't used it before. It's different than the stick glues that you buy for school. It's an archival stick. And I like to buy this nice big fat one because then I can just rub things across the top of it and it's easy to use. So in a little while, we'll do a lesson with that. Before I start work, I like to, to set up all of my materials so I don't have to get up and go looking for everything before I you know, get into the painting and the gluing and all those things. So you can see, I put down my piece of watercolor paper, which is 140 pound watercolor paper, and it's approximately uh, 12 inches by 20 inches. And then I taped the paper so that each opening would be four inches wide by five and a half inches long. So there it is, and that's what I'm gonna work with today. So I just wanted to show you what the setup looks like. Uh, we're going to use papers today, and I like to get my papers ready into some cut pieces before I start. Uh, I arrange the pieces after I cut them into these little trays that my friend gave me. I think she got them with, with frozen dinners, but she saves them for me, and they're really nice because then you can divide up all the little cut pieces that you make and put them into little trays. I have them so that they match with colors. Um, and I have one that I cut up a lot of little birds that I want to put in my spring uh, collage. And another one I did that has a lot of flowers in it. So that's how I'm setting up. The papers that I'm using are papers that I've collected over the years. Uh, the first one is, these are palette papers. When I do my acrylics, um, this is a paper that um, stays wet for a long time but when I'm done using it I let it dry and then I can use this for collage. If you've taken any of my classes over the years you've probably made some marbled paper. So these are some samples of my marbleized paper and I have lots of it. You don't have to have this but if you've taken classes with me in the past you probably have some. Uh, when I go to museums and I, and I find books of wrapping paper, this particular wrapping paper is William Morris paper. If you don't know who William Morris is, look him up. He's a, a fabric designer and there's so much more to learn about him. So I have some of his paper. I went to the uh, art supply store and they have some nice papers too. And this is one that I use a lot. Um, it's, a, it's a paper that has uh, ancient Korean text on it. Sometimes at wallpaper stores they will give you the old books. And I have a lot of books of wallpaper samples. Another thing we did in our classes last spring was we made our own jelly printed papers. And that's a lot of fun. So here's some of the jelly printed papers. And last but not least, you can cut up magazines. And uh, I don't have a lot of those, but I have some of those. And I have some uh, paper that has uh, ah, some uh, music on it. That's another one. So I'm just going to show you a little bit how I work on this to get ready for my collage. So I, let's say I take this piece of paper with the music on it. and. I'm going to draw a couple little birds on here just to give me a sample of where to cut.
here's some of my palette paper that's dark and you know I like crows so this is going to be my little dark crow-like bird I don't know right now if they're gonna fit into my paintings or yet or not I just cut them out in the hopes that I'll have enough things to work with there's that little bird and I'm going to put them all into this bin that I have over here because I made many birds a little while ago and I'll just put them in the little bird bin. Now what if you want some flowers? Well I have this marbleized paper that has flowers on it. I created this paper myself. And if I want to, I can just cut around some of those shapes. And I'm going to save those in this bin over here that I already have a few little flowers. You can see a couple of the little flowers that I cut out before. I also had paper, the William Morris paper had flowers on it. And so I cut some of those shapes out. Just take your time. This could be, you know, one day you cut out shapes. Get those all ready. And then maybe next day you paint. And then maybe the next day you glue it all, you know. Art does not happen in a minute. You know, you just want to just enjoy what you're doing. Don't put too much pressure on yourself to make it perfect. Just do what makes you happy. Because in the end, that's the person you're supposed to make happy. To me, that's what art is for, is to make me relax and enjoy and feel like I'm playing. Not feel like I'm playing, I'm really playing, that's what I'm doing, right? So there you see that little shape. It's gonna be fun to find, to see what happens to all these things when I'm finished. The other thing I like to do is I like to make some little pieces that are, that maybe are more like butterfly wings or, let's see, this one looks kind of like butterfly wings, doesn't it? So I don't know. Maybe I'll just cut some of that out. Sometimes on my palette paper, I just scribbled on this piece and it looks like a big flower to me. So I'm just going to turn it over where I know where the scribble part is. And I'm just gonna draw maybe a big flower right in there. And just cut it out. Um, if you wanted to, you could cut a shape to go in the middle of that. Okay, have fun with that part. And then put them all into the bins that they belong in so you know where the flowers are, and you know where the birds are, and you know where the butterfly wings are. For the painting, I'm going to use watercolor paints. And you can see over here, I have a tray of watercolor and I just, my brush just fell apart. Don't worry if that happens, just stick it back together. 
Anyway, I don't know, I need to glue those. Probably if you leave your brushes in water too long, that's when the ferrule becomes unglued. So maybe that happened to me, I don't know. Um, I'm gonna put it in some water. And when I paint, I paint intuitively. That means that whatever I feel in my heart I wanna paint, my brush will do it, okay? I don't give it too much thought, but I know that I wanna put some water on these and I can put it not the whole thing but if you want to you could do the whole thing I'm just going to put something different on each one just a little water to soak in there see what happens um, you may notice that my my paper is tilted a little bit I put some of these little trays underneath the top part of my um, panel here to make it the water flow down because I know that watercolor paintings look really lovely when the paint flows into one color into another. So you can just try whatever you want with this. Um, but I'm just getting a little bit of wet. And maybe I'll splash a little bit a few places. Uh, and then I'm just going to start with some different colors on each one. love yellow. Yellow, you know, is spring to me because we have to have the sun, right? I'm getting a bunch of yellow and I'm going to put it in here. Now watercolor is called watercolor because it needs water, so don't, for, don't be afraid to put water in with that. I have a couple different yellows. Use whatever you have. Make sure you put some water in there make it too thick. I have this turquoise green that I like. But I think I'll just, while it's wet, put some in there. Remember, a lot of this is probably going to get um, covered up with some of your collage. that drip a little bit this way. If you want to, if you feel like you have too much, you can pick some up with your tissue. And the other thing people like to do is when it's really wet, like this one up here in the corner, you can put a little salt on it. I can get the top off my salt. All kinds of things are hard to do today. A pill, it's in a pill bottle and I just cannot get that one open, okay? So I guess we won't do salt on it today, but you could shake salt into that. 
Um, I'm going to just mop up some of it with my tissue. You can scratch some lines into it if you want. That might make some nice little pieces of grasses. You decide. These are yours. Just have fun. Now that this is dry, I'm going to work on each uh, individual um, card, putting different marks in, maybe using a couple different brushes. I have the fan brush, and I have a number four watercolor brush. I might even use my um, markers. These are just, you know, water soluble markers in all different colors so I'm just setting everything up to make sure that I have everything where I can reach it. Um, I have my watercolors and the other thing that I might use is one of my PBO pens. I'm really liking these um, opaque markers and metallics and this particular one is gold. Not sure if I'm using it but I will just have it here ready.
Um, at this point, these could be finished paintings if you want them to be. They represent spring, uh, they're light, they're airy, you know, so if, if that's as far as you want to go, then rip off the tape and put them on cards. Uh, but I want to continue playing today and I want to try some of these other materials. So I'm going to start with some of the markers that I have sitting here. I just want to put a few lines. I love line work. I'm adding a few little leaves to this one. Maybe to this one too. Now I'm going to use my PBL markers. They're oil based, so I'm putting those on top. And I like the silver one with the blues and the purples. Not a lot of marks, just a few. I like the way it shines. I use a light touch and I just let it skip some of the places. I'm not outlining things, I'm just adding some lines that are very loose. If you hold the marker in a loose way, the marks that will come out will be loose. I'm working from my shoulder, not my fingers. Now, now I'm going to let that dry and then we'll be ready for the uh, Yoohoo glue. I'm 
getting ready to use the Yuhu glue and I've put that out and I also cut out a little piece of freezer wrap. There's a shiny side and a flat side. I want the shiny side up. I'm going to use that for a gluing surface if I need to so that I'm not making a mess on top of all of my work. Um, I set up some little cutout pieces that we had pre that I had previously made and arrange them on the panels so that they look like something I would like to do for my next step. So um, you can do some of that arranging if you want to. And I'll let me show you how I use my glue. I previously told you that I like the wider glue because I can take the piece that I've cut out and I can just gently rub it on top of that glue. It's not terribly messy that way. An alternate way is to put it on your piece of uh, freezer wrap and then use the glue on its side and put some of that onto your piece. And now I'm going to position it where I want it. And then gently press it down with your fingers, making sure that all of it adheres. This part's going to take me a little while, so I'm going to let the camera run. I'm not going to show you everything that I put down, but you'll get a good idea. And then when I finish, I'll show you the finished pieces.
Okay, we're ready for the part that I like best, which we call the big reveal. I take the tape off, and the tape is quite sticky, so go slowly and take it off. There you have it, spring in the studio. Have fun creating. I'm going to put these, uh, stick these onto cards and then send them out. It's nice spending time with you.